Hello friends. Today in this lecture, we are going to learn about the appropriate methodological framework for the time series data analysis. Now, I hope till now you all be must be clear about what you mean by time series analysis. So whenever we talk about time series analysis, our data will be either stationary or non-stationary. So that means I can say that if you are going to look your diagram, that means whatever variables you are taking and whenever you are going to plot your variables, uh, you will be getting this type of graph. So we have already learned that whenever we are talking about time series, there will be there can be a seasonal trend, there can be a cyclical trend, there can be your irregular trend that we know uh, where that is commonly known as stochastic trend. And we can we have already learned that whenever we are talking about this irregular kind of trend, uh, this type of data is known as non-stationary data. And we have to convert this data into the stationary and then we can work on the time series data. But before starting this appropriate method that which kind of uh, test we are going to apply on the time series data, if you are going to see that there are certain ups and downs in the time series data. Your, if I'm taking this is this diagram as a stock price, the prices are moving up, then they are moving down, then up, then down, and then again it's increasing and then again it's decreasing. That means there must be some factors due to which the prices are moving up and down. So these factors that when the prices are moving up and down, we can see that there can be some economical factors uh, which are moving the price up or down we no, uh, in time series data we normally name it as a structural break so before starting the lesson you must be aware about that whatever data you are taking whether there is a structural break in your data or not if there is a structural break go with that test i have already made a video on this that how you are going to test about these structural breaks so the first step is to check the structural break and then you have to check whether your data is non-stationary or your data is stationary. So if your data is non-stationary, some of the time series uh, tests are done on the non-stationary series and some of the tests are done on the stationary series. But before moving further, before checking whether the uh, test one will be applicable or test second will be applicable, you must be aware whether your data that means whatever variables you are taking whether they are stationary or non-stationary so if we talk about you will get this type of diagram and if we talk about uh, stationary series you will get this type of diagram or uh, this is a diagram for your uh, weak stationary where your mean is constant and variance is constant but sometimes we work only when your mean is constant you will find in the time series data whenever you are taking about the stock price your variance won't be constant throughout so we can work on that also so the first step is to check whether your data is stationary or non-stationary so now once you have checked whether your data is stationary or non-stationary then we will move further that which type of test is applicable or which type of test we can apply on it so the first thing is you have to test the stationarity. Now, if I'm going to test the stationarity, your variables can be divided into these three parts. The first is when all the variables are stationary. Let's say you want to work on uh, two variables or you want to work on three variables or five variables. So first step is for all the five variables, you are going to check whether all the five variables are stationary or they are not stationary. If uh, you are taking the variables and you find that uh, with the help of ADF test or PP test or KPSS test that whatever variables you are taking all are, all the variables are stationary. So I can say that all the variables are stationary at level. For level we use the word zero or I can say that all the variables are integrated at level. I zero means integrated at level so that means my all the variables are stationary. Or it can also happen that whatever variables you are taking, two or five variables you are taking, and when you test their stationarity using your ADF test, PP test, or KPSS test, you find that your none of the variable is stationary. So that means I can say that whatever variables you are taking, they all are non-stationary. That means they are not integrated at level. Now, what you are going to do, you are going to convert all the variables into the stationary and then you will find that 
if you are going to convert those variables into the stationary whether they are converted into stationary or not so that means you can take the first difference and convert the non stationary variables into the stationary variables so if the variables are stationary at first difference that means after taking the first difference you are all the non stationary data all the non stationary variables converted into the stationary we name it as i1 which is commonly known as integrated at first difference and if it they are not integrated at first difference you have to again take the difference to convert it into the stationary that is known as integrated at second difference now these are the two cases when all the variables are stationary or all the variables are non stationary and third case is when you are going to find the mixed variables that means uh, suppose you are taking five variables out of which two variables are stationary at level that means they are i0 but the remaining three variables are not stationary you have to convert them to the stationary so that means you are going to get the mixed kind of variables some are stationary at level and some are stationary at first difference so these will be the three conditions now the question arises if these three conditions are there what kind of test you are going to apply so let's first of all talk when all the variables that you are taking for the analysis they are stationary at level so if all the variables are stationary at level you have to apply ols or war model ols means ordinary least square we have already done about the ordinary least square method we have done the assumptions i have already explained all the assumptions uh, for the ols method in the previous videos and var means vector auto regressive model now the question arises when you are getting that all the variables are not stationary at level they are stationary at first difference then we are going to apply the johansson test and whenever you are getting the mixed variables in that case we are going to apply the ardl model which is known as auto regressive distributive lag model now johansson test and ardl model these two models are related to the co integration test so that means i can say that johansson test will also give you the result whether your data is co integrated or not as well as ardl model will also give you the same result whether your data is co integrated or not so that means once we apply these two test either my data will not be co integrated or my data that means whatever analysis i am going to do will be co integrated now if the data is not co integrated you have to stop you can't do the further analysis but if your data is co integrated then you have to further apply two test one is ecm error correction model and second is your casualty test now in this lecture i am just going to give you a brief introduction about all these models that we are going to study in the future videos i'll explain all these tests one by one so first of all let's learn about the regression analysis which is commonly known as ordinary least square now whenever we talk about regression analysis it is a statistical procedure for predicting the impact of one or more factors on another variable as i have already discussed in my previous video let's say i take the example suppose you want to study the impact of diabetes on the heart attack or you want to study the impact of those person who smoke more on the heart attack or the person who are obese on the heart attack uh that means your obesity your smoking or your diabetes can be the independent variables we want to see the impact whether these are impacting on the heart attack or not so whenever you are seeing the impact of independent variable on the dependent variable we name it as a regression analysis and this regression analysis can be used in business and finance sectors or even in any sector you can use in marketing sector you can use in hr sector that means regression analysis is frequently used to determine the impact of particular input on the output now next uh, we have already talked about vector auto regressive model as we have already learned auto regressive means when the today's variable is depending on its past variable 
सो वेक्टर ऑटो रिग्रेसिव मॉडल इज अ वर्क हाउस मल्टी वेरियट टाइम सीरीज मॉडल नाउ ओवर हेयर यू हैव टू सी दैट वेक्टर ऑटो रिग्रेसिव इज अ मल्टी वेरियंट मल्टी वेरियंट मीन दैट मिनिमम टू टाइम सीरीज डेटा यू आर रिक्वायरिंग इट विल वर्क ऑन वेदर यू आर हैविंग अ टू टाइम सीरीज डेटा और थ्री और फोर टाइम सीरीज डेटा दैट्स वाई वी नेम इट एज वैक्टर ऑटो रिग्रेसिव मॉडल वर्क ऑन मल्टी वेरियंट टाइम सीरीज मॉडल इट इज नॉट यूनी वेरियंट टाइम सीरीज मॉडल In the previous lectures, I have also discussed about ARIMA model, which is also known as Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average, which was a univariate model. That means if I am having only one time series data, I can work on it. But vector auto regressive model is a multivariate time series model that relates that whatever is your current observation of the variable is depending on the past observation of itself and past observation of other variables. that means i can say that var model allows the feedback or reverse causality among the dependent and the independent regressors using their own past now if i talk about in general terms uh, you will not find any exogenous variable in this it assumes that all the regressors are the endogenous variable in the future videos we are going to talk about exogenous and endogenous variable Now over here, I'll just give you a small brief uh, introduction about vector auto regressive model. Suppose I take that you have two variables x and y. So first thing that you have to remember, we have to take minimum of two variables, and there should be a bidirectional. That means x is affecting y, and y is affecting x. So that means if I'm going to construct a model on this, I can say that today's value of y is depending. on the yesterday's value of y as well as yesterday's value of x so that means i can say that in vector auto regressive model one variable if i want to predict i want to predict the future for a variable one it is depending on the past observation of the same variable and past observation of the another variable that is known as auto regressive model now third type we are going to study over here is co integration now co integration is a technique which is used to find a possible correlation between time series process in the long term now these are the some of the most popular co integrated tests that means we have to use engel grangen johansen test philip morris test and ardl model now over here the question arises why we are using the co integration test as we have already learned that uh, while using the ols are all the data should be stationary at level and while using the co integration test either my all the data is stationary at first reference or i'll get the mix uh, type of data some are integrated at level and some are integrated at first reference now the question arises over here if we are going to apply the ols model that means ordinary least square model on the non stationary time series data that means if you find that some data is stationary at level and some data is stationary at first reference and still we are applying the ols model then whatever the results we are going to get they will be spurious or i can say that the results shown by the ols can show that there is a significant relationship between the variables which in fact are not correlated that means they are not related to each other but still your data is showing your analysis is showing that there is a significant relationship uh, or on other hand i can say that if there are two or more variables then we can say that they form a long term equilibrium relationship even though they may deviate from the equilibrium in the short run so due to all these issues we use the co integration test which came into existence to analyze these type of relationship so if uh, i can say that if if two or more variables are linked to form an equilibrium relationship uh, in the long run then these variables are said to be co integrated and you, as you can see in this diagram that uh, your commodity a and commodity b are moving together we can say that they are co integrated or co moving Now next is error correction model which is commonly known as ECM. The error correction model is a time series regression model that is based on the behavioral assumption that two or more time series exhibit 
an equilibrium relationship that determines both short run and long run behavior so in other words i can say that ecm integrates the short run dynamics with the long run equilibrium without losing the long run information and avoids the problem such as your spurious relationship that we have resulted if you are going to apply the ols model in the, on the non stationary data so to avoid all these things once we have find out that they are uh, the, your uh, data is co integrated we are going to apply the error correction model and the last thing is over here is casualty test now if we talk about the casualty test in an econometrics model casualty test is used to verify the usefulness of one variable to forecast the another that means uh, we all know that in casualty test we have to take minimum of two variables so it will help you whether one variable is affecting the other variable or not so we can say a variable is said to ganger cause another variable if it is helpful for forecasting the other variable so that means they are divided into three relationship whenever you have find it out that there is a co integration between two variable there exists three relationship among these two variables the first is that variable x is affecting the variable y or i can say variable y is affecting the variable x or i can say that x and y affect each other so if i am talking about only x is affecting to y but y is not affecting to x or i am talking about x is affecting y is affecting to x but x is not affecting to y then i can say that this is a unidirectional relationship and if x is affecting y as well as y is affecting x then we name it as a bidirectional relationship so that's all for today's lecture in the next lecture we are going to study about all these tests in detail thank you